Hello and welcome to episode three, three of Rangers TV and it's kind of a one trick pony this week. Um, this is a review of uh, this, the Bear Grylls survival kit and what I did is I rather meanly sprung it on someone, a good friend of mine called Sam, who has been bushcrafting for 10 or so years and literally I gave this to him while we were out wild camping to see what he thought and to be honest, I kind of agree with him. Run VT. Okay, so we're here this afternoon, out in the peaks. Uh, an, an, an unknown place. An unknown place. But it's quite sunny, it's been a lovely day. We're chilling, like villains. Relaxing for the first time in ages. <sighs> And uh, we're just gonna. Can you still see me, or is my head off cam? Well, it is a big head. Yeah, true. My head's never <laughs> off cam. Massive. I might have to back up a bit to get the full head in. <laughs> <laughs> no one will know what you're on about until I take my hat off, which I won't do. Go do that. I will just adjust the lighting. <laughs> yeah, true. It mess about with the exposure levels. <laughs> but yeah, so we're here, and uh, we thought we'd do a little review for you. The sort of thing we do. That's now, how we roll. I want you to imagine that you've got nothing, nothing in your pocket. Can I have a lighter you, and a fag? You can't have fuck all. And uh, you're reaching, you, 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 your canoe's overturned, all your gear's gone down the rapids and over a waterfall and you're not likely to get it back. Yeah. But you reach into your one cargo pocket and you feel that. Like this. Right, so basically the situation, what you're saying is the situation's bad. You've lost all your essential gear. You put your hand in your pocket and feel the Bear Grylls survival kit. And you've just realised the situation's got a lot worse. <laughs> 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 Any hope you had of surviving the irony because it says survival on it. We'll see, we'll see. I'm judging it without, I'm judging a book by its cover. Now, do you want to know how much this retails for? No, but part of the video is that you have to tell me, so go ahead. <laughs> the okay. viewers will want to the know. The retail how much this price costs. can can be anything between twenty five and thirty pounds. Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> now I got it for ten quid. Ripped off. <laughs> and I still feel a little bit cheated, even after spending ten quid. There's a couple of reasons I don't feel completely cheated, but you'll probably see those. But there's going to be all the sad for you. So are we doing this based on whether is it worth it for a 10 quid? Should we say is it worth it for a 20 quid survival kit because that's between the two? <coughs> yeah, good. Great. And I've seen it for 25 in uh, certain major yeah. retail outlets for outdoors gear and laugh. And then I was in another major retailer and I had a big bag, a big sort of a crate by, by the till of all their marked down stuff and that was in there for 10 quid. Yeah. Sure, so it was the bin. He <laughs> <laughs> found something in the bin. <laughs> but yeah. So uh, I, out of curiosity, because I'm always interested in what, you know, sort of like non-bushcrafters think survival gear is. Okay. Now, bearing in mind, we don't live in a freezing cold country. Yeah. And so is this a survival kit based on we're out and we get... We're screwed, but we're in the UK, shall we say? Is that a supposition? Yeah, I think if you're Antarctica, you'd just cry. Or the desert, or anywhere, to be honest. If you was in the shop and you saw it, you just But there's cry. one very good reason why you probably wouldn't commit suicide. Right? To yeah. warn others about the, the perils? No, uh, oh, you'll see what I mean. Ah, right, I see what's going on here now, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I know. Instantly, I know what he's all about. Right, am I to open this? Can I open it? Okay, you can open it now. Right. So, tell me about the case. What do you think of the, the pouch that it comes uh, in? I mean, that's the thing, it's, uh, again, survival. If we're basing it for the UK to say, oh, it's not a tin, you can't boil water and it will, let's face it, we're in the UK, there's very, very few places where you're going to get lost for days and days and days and have to start worrying about where you're getting water from. And most places in the UK, if you get lost, you can just drink the water from anywhere and be at a hospital within 24 hours walking. So the case is just, just as it's not even a case, right? So we get it out and it's in, like, one of these bags. I'm looking at it. oh god. Can you oh say? God. Well, there's some guitar wire here, so at least we can sing songs. <laughs> right, we'll open this. 
it's freezing cold, my hands are numb, I need to get this open quick to light a fire. Bearing in mind that my fingers are numb and it's freezing cold. How do you open this? Right, fail. It's failed on the first hurdle because you can't open the damn thing. It's clearly a childproof lock, that's why I can't open it. Alright, here we go. I don't think you'd be opening that with you fell in, you've come out of your canoe, you're freezing cold and you need to light a fire with that. Cotton wool. You know what I'm going to do, we'll put it to the stuff. Can you see the floor in this shot? I can get it so it Right, check it out, because we'll put stuff on one side, okay. so the orange bit is we're keeping it, that bit we're not. Is this useful? Probably not. You'd be better off having a tampon because... You get more cotton wool. Oh yes, it's not useful. Right, there's some string wool. Any string's better than no string, because you, you said don't... you couldn't kill yourself with this kit, but I reckon the breaking strain of this is about 100 kilos. I don't think it's even that. You could double it up. I think. <laughs> and anyway, you could just tie it around your neck. You won't even need to hang yourself. You tie it around your neck, keeping that. When you realised <laughs> you were having to use the Bear Grylls survival kit, that's the first thing you could, and you just garrot yourself, basically. I suppose you could tie it around your penis until it went numb and cut it off and eat it. You're the best bit. Well, all right, oh, well, oh, brilliant, yeah. We've got a beer bottle opener. Excellent. All right, there's logic to this. This is the striker for the flint. Right, let's do it. Let's do it the proper way. I think so good, is it? We're keeping the string. This, I mean, to be honest, I think once you scrape the outer coating off it, you can make a decent spark, but I don't think this metal's the best suited to it. You have to use this. You know, one thing I will say, have you put this string on yourself or not? No. I right, don't. kudos, yeah, because most fire starters, the string's about that big. Yeah. And you ended up having to take that off and it defeats the purpose of having it on string because you lost it. I mean, I'd rather use the spine of my knife, but... No, that's not it either. I'm getting some... That's pretty How about the, yeah. the tooth bit at the end? No, I've tried that and it's not working. There you go. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that, that people yeah. go like that and it sh shows the tinder everywhere? Draw the seal away, that's what you should do. Right then. Yeah, that, that's going in the keeping pile. But then again, at the same time, it's got bear grills. Do you want to live... Or do you want to have dignity? Do you want to be found dead? <laughs> Cutching something with the Bear Grylls logo on. It's just not for me. I mean, he's a decent guy. He's, he does a lot of money for the Scouts. Does a lot of things for the Scouts. Right then, here we go. Pocket Guide. Well, yeah, we'll go through that later because that's going to be the biggest source of jokes. Oh, yes, there's a knife. Yes. Yes. Wait a minute. It says Gerber on it. Oh, it's half serrated as well. Right then, the line is not too bad, the line is stiff and you can't push it over by accident but, come on which camera are we using that one? Oh, wait, that cam camera one and it's down near the orange one, the, the bag What's that? Where you put, yeah, the closer your hand is to the bag, the closer you are to centre frame Yeah Right, ah, oh, I see we're using two cameras, this is just like the BBC News Studio Right, yeah, the line are locked it's relatively tough, uh, but this, does it say Bear Grylls on it? Right, it doesn't say Bear Grylls on it, so even though it's a terrible knife, we'll put that to one side because it doesn't say it's better than nothing. There's a whistle. We're not going to try it because that's probably done God knows what to one end of it. We'll keep that on the assumption that it works. It's just really this costs 30 quid. This is retail for 30 quid, really. Yeah. Right, to be honest, the, the, there's a, just buy some shoelaces. You can get one of them from Go Outdoors for seven quid, a Primus one that's miles better. Get a Buck Bantam for like 12 quid, or get an Enlin or Ganzo for three or four. Man, let's finish this. This is painful, this. Like, I know I need chemotherapy, but it makes me really ill. This is what this is like. Uh, I don't know what this is. Your fuse has gone in your house. You, you reach for your Bear Grylls survival kit. That can't be snare wire uh, because it's too stiff. It's just it's no, it's no good. Stiff wire for snares is ridiculous because 
it 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 won't sort of collapse down around the little say rabbit's ears or anything. It's just no, that's that's that that's going in there. So the cotton one and that's going in there. What on earth is this? I wonder. Oh, tooth floss, great. To be honest, again, string that some strings better than no string. Uh, matches probably work. And this, I'm not even gonna read this. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna look at the pictures. That's that's a compromise between reading it and not reading it. Okay then. Oh, well, there's different ways of making fire, right? But basically, you can use a car battery to make fire. Where's the? If there's no. If you took the car battery out. Yeah, it was a bit heavy. All right, that's okay then. Oh, uh, look. There's there's a a ruler in case you want to measure penises. Let me see that. We're holding up to that one. There we go for measuring. As, as bushcrafters in uh, dire situations begin their yeah. slow and inevitable move towards. We'll measure the dicks. And whose boss is that behind the curtain? <laughs> swear, showing you how to swear at a helicopter. Signal fire. I mean, it's basic. Yeah, it's better than nothing if you wanted to survive but if you pushed a kid out of a lifeboat so you could get in the lifeboat and the titanic was sinking have you really survived because you're not living as a human anymore and uh, that's for sure i don't know i mean it right i'll say this it's I'm not as bad as i mean it's, it's better than nothing you know if if we're in the premise of what you were saying before basically you fell out of your canoe your canoe's wandered off out you're freezing cold then i don't know use the orange bag to wave about until someone finds you because do you really want to use it's got Bear Grylls logos on it actually the knife it's not got a bear the matches haven't got a Bear Grylls logo on neither is the string this hasn't but at the same time it's a Gerber knife and it's parts are rated like what use is why that? is parts are rated bad man because number one it's and it, you can't just sharpen it with a normal stone you can't just it's just it's crap it's crap what, what do people use it for stripping bark off trees to toast marshmallows uh, have you ever used parts rated? That's no. the thing, no, neither have I, no. I've never ever bought a parts rated knife. I've, I bought one from Rhodes, but this is before I knew about knives. Before, this is before I understood that well, they I were Well, I say I've never bought a parts rated knife. I obviously have bought at least one. You're yeah, holding. ah, he's been caught on camera line. I mean, it's all right. Yeah, I've, I've never knowingly you. bought a parts rated knife. See, oh. see, that knife would be billions better if it's just a single edge. That would be quite a nice knife. Cheap. But like, I don't know. I'd swap it for a book bantam because the steel. I mean, the steel. We don't even know oh anything yeah, about the steel. Yeah, I absolutely would swap it for almost what? any other knife. An Opinel, I'd swap it for. I'd swap it for a Ganzo knife. I mean, Definitely I've had a look at those, there. and they're about eight quid if you want to buy one. Right. So there's the Bear Grylls one. That one's my one. Just lacking a whistle that I normally keep around my neck. Thor fire torch. Oh, not, you're not allowed to go through your stuff. Yeah, I am. All right, that's as the next. Do you feel your dignity's been? The there? next episode, yeah. Can we turn the camera off so I can look at my stuff? Reset what's just happened. It's not as bad as I thought. That's the positive I'll say. I mean, the flint probably works. The steel probably works. The whistle probably works. But would you want it? Would you want to draw attention to yourself, knowing that people are going to find you with that? Probably not. <laughs> that's what. We'll end it on that note. <laughs> Okay, so here's another picture of the contents of that kit. So from left to right, you've got the Bear Grylls Fire Steel and Striker. You've got some dental floss, some coated wire that definitely isn't snare wire, the survival instructions, a whistle of some description, some nylon cord, again of some description, some off-brand long burn matches, which I'm not sure if they work, don't really want to test them. If you want matches like this, then just get the British Army ones because they're just the best. Um, you've got a, a cotton wool ball and the knife, the partially serrated, partially useful knife. So that would normally retail you between 25 and 30 pounds. It comes in the little orange bag with another waterproof bag inside it. And it's garbage. Um, there's no other way to put this. So. Let's have a look at what you could have got. You know, just this, this is just my idea to cover all these bases. I mean, this does not by any means cover all your survival 
needs, but it will give you an edge. And I guess, you know, if you want that edge, you, you can do better than this. And you can certainly do better than for the money. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few of the things I've got that I generally carry that would replace everything in this kit. Okay, so I don't want to be massively negative about survival kits. It's just that I've never, ever seen a pre-assembled survival kit that was any good. Um, if there's a company out there that produces an actually good survival kit that would really give you an edge, then please send it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something that you could have got for a lot cheaper and assembled yourself and put in any little bag that will fit in a pocket. There are little cargo pocket organizers that you could easily fit all of the stuff I'm going to show you and more into and just leave it there and forget it. You can ha it's so cheap you can have it as backup kit. So the first thing is that knife has got to go. That is one of the worst. I mean, if that is the only knife you had, then fine. You know, the best knife in the world is the one you got on you when you need it. But really, for, a, for about the same money as you pay for that knife in retail, about seven or eight pounds, you can get one of these. This is just an Opinel knife that I've modified slightly. Um, I'll open it up so you can see the modifications. Now what I've done is, if you can just see that, I've taken a divot out of it, because it's a wooden handle, I've just carved it away and sanded it down so that I can open it even if the wood swelled and it's got wet. It's a carbon steel blade, so it would give you a better spark, if you like. So that means that you can use it if you find a piece of flint or a piece of obsidian, anything like that. Anything sharp enough to basically shave off a red hot spark of metal. Um, and there's also an eyelet just at the end there so that uh, you can hang it around your neck if you need to. So you can make your own cordage or scavenge some cordage or anything like that and just get it around your neck and nice and secure. So these are between eight and ten pounds. I've also got a little sheath, I'm a little neck sheath I made for it out of a piece of webbing. Just way easier, way better. I mean everybody's going to have their own idea on what's a good cheap knife but I'm going for sort of compactness. I mean you can even go for a smaller size of Opinel, they come in all sizes. This just happens to be the one that fits my hand comfortably and I didn't really feel like buying another one just to, you know, fit in this pouch. Although I'm going to show you something in a minute that, you know, you'll appreciate. So that's a piece of webbing with a piece of paracord on it so you can put it around your neck. It's also got a couple of little elastic bits, well, elastic bands, bits of elastic just sewn onto the front so that uh, you can put a lighter on there if you want to. So, you know, you can combine, you know, knives and fire at the same time. Now, while I, I think fire steels are good, you know, it's, they're fairly good. You have to massively know what you're doing if you're going to use them. You have to know about fire, fine. If you already know the survival stuff, great. But it takes up a lot of space and it's a maybe starting a fire thing for a lot of people, especially if you're cold or you're shivering. It would be a lot of effort to start a fire. So item number two would be a turbo flame lighter. I don't know if you can pick up the turbo flame and if you can see it. Um, this came in a pack of two for a pound, so that's 50p and that will light more fires than the matches in that kit. It will light tinder if it's dry, as with anything. All your tinder needs to be dry if you're going to light a fire. I mean you can use it to dry out larger sticks and, and logs and stuff, but you do need initially dry tinder. We're coming to that. But the, these that will definitely light you a fire and it will light more fire than those matches and it will light, you know, dry kindling straight away. It's really hot. It's so hot you can solder with it. So, yeah, you know, do the right thing. Take a lighter. You know, you, there's plenty of room in the bag. I understand why the Bear Grylls kit doesn't come with a lighter, but there should be a huge note on that because there's plenty of room in that pouch. Take a lighter. And also, these things are pretty much waterproof. You know, if I've put these through washing machines and they've come out fine. It's a nice positive light. It's really, really hot. If you've got a pair of pliers, you can actually solder bits of wire together with it. I'm recommending that. Um, the next thing that isn't in the kit that is an absolute lifesaver and gives you more of your day to work in if, you've, if, you, if you're running out of time or if it's the winter, you've got a very short work day to get stuff done. Light, 
little head torch will extend your work day. Now you can get smaller head torches than these and you can get larger head torches than these, but there's a reason, I mean, I own this one. This is my like backup, sits in my work bag head torch for emergencies. Just twist the cap and you get a nice bright, I think it's four LED light, you know? A little bit of extra light. Also, you can signal with it, so you can signal for help. I mean, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think you know what I'm talking about. It's easy, you know, they're, they're cheap. It's about fivers worth. It doesn't cost, you know, to have that as an option. I mean, obviously, if it's in your survival kit, maybe put it in a little plastic bag, maybe put a piece of cardboard in between the battery and the contacts inside the torch, you know, to just make sure it doesn't twist on accidentally. So when you need it, you've got it. Or even this particular one takes a nice flat, um, it's a 2032 battery or two of them, two little disc batteries. You could easily put like a piece of tape, electrical tape with two spare batteries, and that gives you light for a very long time. So, you know, recommended, you know, seriously, light. If you are screwed, you do need it, okay? Um, the cordage, just, you know, this is about a pound's worth. It's eight meters of three millimeter paracord. Not the best gauge stuff in the world. Probably won't take more than two or 300 pounds, but this is gonna be way better than that crappy white nylon cord. You know, it's much better, much tougher. You can use it for all sorts of stuff. There's even strands in the middle if you do need it for other cordage. You can strip it down to other, other tiny little strands so you can do a lot more with it. You can sew with some of the strands. And it's just better. I mean, and it also won't break down in UV light. And after a few months, if you've set anything up, if you are literally out there and screwed, that white nylon stuff, even if you left it out in sunlight, would just crumble to powder. It's, it's a kind of purlon cord. It's the same cord they use for guy ropes on really cheap tents. So that's that. Um, now the Bear Grylls one does come with some cotton balls as tinder. You know, it comes out, well, it comes with a cotton ball. One cotton ball, seriously, are you kidding me? I get to light one fire, that's not gonna cut it. I need, you know, I might be cold, wet, I might not be paying too much attention. I need some backups and this is just a little um, in fact, it's a urine sample, but any little tube of a uh, plastic tube that's going to be more or less waterproof, and you can be damn sure that a urine sample bottle is liquid leak proof. They are very much designed that way. This is one I just happened to get. It's got 10 Vaseline soaked cotton wool balls in it. That is 10 fires. If you know what you're doing, lighting a fire, any kind of tinder, it just gives you way, way more of an edge. You know, this. Oh. Now, I'm getting more annoyed with the Bear Grylls survival kit, and I was trying to be fair and open-minded. Anyway, little tube of cotton wool balls. And finally, a whistle. It's good to be able to signal for help. If you hear people coming and you're injured and stuff like that, you, you may need to draw attention to yourself. But that flat plastic whistle is horrendous. Spend two quid, get a proper referee's whistle with a little, co with a little cork ball inside it, or a pee, and it's way way louder. I mean, that's, uh, the sound will travel for about half a mile easily, if not further. You know, definitely an unusual sound. Three blasts on a whistle, three of anything laid out in a pattern. Um, people who are looking for you are trained to spot things like that, things that are not a part of nature, that are not a natural phenomenon. Three blasts of a whistle, or even SOS, like with the torch. Three long blasts, three short blasts, three long blasts, job done. People are going to know you need help. So that covers all the bases. I mean, the Bear Grylls one had fire lighting, it had some cordage, had signalling with the whistle, um, and it had the shittest knife of all time. So, and just to prove, I'm going to put all that stuff in the little Bear Grylls pouch right now. So, so it's that eight metres of good cordage, ten um, cotton wool balls, plus the container, which could come in handy for all sorts of other things, definitely for keeping super dry tinder. You could pack other tinder into that or something else if you need, if you've got some small item that you need to keep dry or waterproof, you know, that's gonna be good. That storm lighter, which was 50 pence. The um, LED head torch, there's no torch in the Bell Girls survival kit. The very, very good Opinel knife, which I rate 
it's a it's a blinder of a knife. If I can get it in there. Sorry. And the whistle, like an actually good whistle. Like you know, there's a reason referees use these so they can be heard over crowds, over background noise. It's going to go all in there. So if you're talking about compactness. So there you go. It's cheaper. It's as compact and it's a hundred times better easily. This is why survival kits have a problem. Nobody putting together a survival, ticket, a survival kit for a price point, trying to match a price point and trying to comply with all sorts of little local and international laws and stuff like that. Nobody's going to do a better job than you. And certainly nobody's going to, you know, put, you, a person isn't going to put in something that they're never going to use. I mean, fair enough. The only thing I think I'd tag out of that survival kit, or the only things, maybe the dental floss, that's quite a good idea for small, I don't know what tiny things you're going to try and tie together though. Generally speaking, if you're building a shelter, you're trying to tie big old logs together and stuff like that and make fixings. So, I don't know why you'd, you'd bother tying very small things together. It's a good idea though, I think it's, it's handy. You know, you may come across a use for it, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. The fire steel is not bad, but again, it's a certain skill set. It requires a certain amount of paying attention. It's cool when you can light a fire with a fire steel, and great, you could probably light that one cotton wool ball with the fire steel. If you're in adverse weather or it's wet, I'd still prefer a lighter, and I'd prefer a lighter, that, a means of lighting fire that I know would react well with water. You know, and it's got its own sealed tinder and quite a bit of it. So if you're thinking, I absolutely need a fire lit now, you could put two or three of those cotton balls going until you've dried out your tinder. And we'll be talking about natural tinders and stuff like that will be going out. But literally, that's my survival kit. It's exactly the same size as the Bear Grylls one. And it's way better. It does everything and more. That knife will keep you alive. It's just brilliant. So I don't like saying this is rubbish and not providing a solution. This is the solution. We've just gone through it. You know, get yourself a decent small knife, get yourself a little head torch, get yourself you know, a lighter that works, that's not going to be triggered accidentally. Get yourself some tinder in there and get yourself some cordage. And I think it worked out about 18 quid to put together, like brand new. That's if you can't scavenge that stuff around your house. If you haven't got a little head torch kicking around, you haven't got some cotton wool. If you haven't got a, like a, I mean, any lighter is going to be better. I mean, even one of these just little standard or like a clipper or, you know, anything like that. You know, a lighter is going to be a fire steel most of the time. You've already, the, the, the fire's already there. And it will certainly beat matches. Take a lighter. Loads of people, people who really know their stuff, um, uh, will always say, take a lighter. You know, everybody for, you know, I mean, Bear Grylls should be saying, take a lighter. The first thing that's in there, in the survival map instructions is, if you have opened this, and you are not in an emergency, get, run out and get a lighter right now. But, I'm sorry, but for the money that they would have charged for that retail, no. And if you're a company out there that's putting together a survival kit and you want it tested by people that are going to be very hard on it, I mean, if there is a piece of survival equipment that we go, yes, this is awesome, like the Opinel or, you know, General Paracord, things like that. If, you know, if, if you have a product, you have a, like a survival kit that's as compact, that somebody can put it in the bottom of a rucksack or in a cargo pocket and just forget about it, then let us know. We, but we will be harsh on any piece of equipment that you ever send into this show. You know, you, it will have to compete against some of the best equipment that we've ever found. Anyway, so that's my, this is rubbish, here is the solution. That's a very punk way of looking at things. You know, if you believe in the punk way of doing stuff, music is rubbish, ergo, we must make our own music. You know, this is punk survival. This, this Bear grill survival kit, you sh nobody should buy it. Nobody. Unless you really want to challenge yourself, unless you wanted to go, right, I went out into the wilderness with nothing to see if I would die, and all I took was a Bear Girl survival kit, then fair enough. Go, run, do it. And we'd love to see the footage. But no, you, you know, anybody can do better. Like, a, almost any other folding knife would be better than that folding knife. Almost any other whistle would be better than that. The matches are very dodgy. I've seen survival matches that you'll never be able to light a fire with. The fire steel, yeah, everybody should know how to light a fire with a fire steel, but it is a specific thing. It's not the sort of thing you're going to have knocking around your house. It's, they're great once you know how to use them. You can light fires with them, but if you're cold and wet or shivering or, you know, you, you, you're really stressed, 
a fire steel is probably not anywhere going to be as good as a lighter. And especially those storm lighters, the ones that produce a jet flame, but, you know, the little ones. Make sure if you do get a jet flame lighter that it is a positive click open. It can't be triggered while it's in your pocket. But seriously, I, I didn't go out and buy anything for my version of the Bear Grylls survival kit. It was just knocking around in my kit. I just assembled a few bits. It does all, if not more, that that survival kit does. So I can't recommend it at all. Um, thanks for watching. I know this has just been one episode on one, just one thing. But I thought I'd have someone else review it and then me go over it, you know, and then me provide a solution. Here is the alternative. There's no point criticising unless you can provide an alternative, really, unless you can say X is better than Y. If Y is really terrible, you should come up with something better. Anyway, thanks again. Take care. Zero, zero, zero. Bear in mind that my fingers are numb and it's freezing cold. How do you open this, right? Fail. It failed on the first hurdle because you can't open the damn thing. It's clearly a childproof lock, that's why I can't open it. Alright, here we go. I don't think you'd be opening that with you fell in, you've come out of your canoe, you're freezing cold and you need to light a fire with that. Cotton wool. You know what I'm gonna put do? We'll put it to the stuff. Can you see the floor in this shot? I can get it so we Right, check it out, because we'll put stuff on one side okay. so. The orange bit is we're keeping it, that bit we're not. Is this useful? Probably not. You'd be better off having a tampon because... You get more cotton wool. Oh yes, yeah, so it's not useful. Right, there's some string more. Any string's better than no string because... You, you said you couldn't kill yourself with this kit, but I reckon the breaking strain of this is about 100 kilos. I don't think it's even that. You could double it up. Like it. <laughs> and anyway, you could just tie it around your neck. You won't even need to hang yourself. You tie it around your neck, keeping that. When you realised you were having to use the Bear Grylls survival kit, that's the first thing you could, and you just garrot yourself, basically. I suppose you could tie it around your penis until it went numb and cut it off and eat it. You're the best bit. Well, all right, all right, all brilliant, yeah. We've got a beer bottle opener. Excellent. All right, there's logic to this. This is the striker for the flint. Right, let's do it. Let's do it the proper way. The flint's no good, is it? We're keeping the string. This, I mean, to be honest, I think once you scrape the outer coating off it, you could make a decent spark, but I don't think this metal's the best suited to it. You have to use this. You know, one thing I will say, have you put this string on yourself or not? No. I right, don't. kudos, yeah, because most fire starters, the string's about that big. Yeah. And you ended up having to take that off, and it defeats the purpose of having it on string because you lost it. I mean, I'd rather use the spine of my knife, but... No, that's not it either. We're getting some. That's pretty How about the, yeah. the tooth bit at the end? No, I've tried that and it's not working. There you go. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that, that people yeah. go like that and it sh shows the tinder everywhere? Draw the seal away, that's what it should do. Right then. Yeah, that, that's going in the keeping pile. But then again, at the same time, it's got Bear Grylls. Do you want to live or do you want to have dignity? Do you want to be found dead <laughs> clutching something with the Bear Grylls logo on? It's just not for me. I mean, he's a decent guy. He's, he does a lot of money for the Scouts. does a lot of things for the Scouts. Right then, here we go. Pocket Guide. Well, you know, we'll go through that later because that's going to be the biggest source of jokes. Oh, yes, there's a knife. Yes. Yes. That works, that's not going to be triggered accidentally. Get yourself some tinder in there and get yourself some cordage. And I think it worked out about 18 quid to put together, like brand new. That's if you can't scavenge that stuff around your house. If you haven't got a little head torch kicking around, you haven't got some cotton wool. If you haven't got a, like a, I mean, any light is going to be better. I mean, even one of these just little standard or like a clipper or, you know, anything like that. You know, a lighter is going to be a fire steel most of the time. You've already, the, the, the fire's already there. And it'll certainly beat matches. Take a liar. Loads of people, people who really know their stuff, um, uh, will always say, take a lighter. You know, everybody for, you know, I mean, Bear Grylls should be saying, take a lighter. The first thing that's in there, in the survival map instructions is, if you have opened this, and you are not in an emergency, get, run out and get a lighter right now. But, I'm sorry, but for the money that they would have charged for that retail, 
No. And if you're a company out there that's putting together a survival kit and you want it tested by people that are going to be very hard on it, I mean, if there is a piece of survival equipment that we go, yes, this is awesome, like the Opinel or, you know, general paracord, things like that. If, you know, if, if you have a product, you have a, like a survival kit that's as compact that somebody can put it in the bottom of a rucksack or in a cargo pocket and just forget about it, then let us know. We, but we will be harsh on any piece of equipment that you ever send into this show. You know, you, it will have to compete against some of the best equipment that we've ever found. Anyway, so that's my, this is rubbish, here is the solution. That's a very punk way of looking at things. You know, if you believe in the punk way of doing stuff, music is rubbish, ergo, we must make our own music. You know, this is punk survival. This, this Bear Grylls survival kit, you sh nobody should buy it. Nobody. Unless you really want to challenge yourself, unless you wanted to go, right, I went out into the wilderness with nothing to see if I would die, and all I took was the Bear Grylls survival kit, then fair enough. Go, run, do it. And we'd love to see the footage. But no, you, you know, anybody can do better. Like a, almost any other folding knife would be better than that folding knife. Almost any other whistle would be better than that. The matches are very dodgy. I've seen survival matches that you'll never be able to light a fire with. The fire steel, yeah, everybody should know how to light a fire with a fire steel, but it is a specific thing. It's not the sort of thing you're going to have knocking around your house. It's, they're great once you know how to use them. You can light fires with them, but if you're cold and wet or shivering or you know, you, you, you're really stressed, a fire steel is probably not anywhere going to be as good as a lighter. And especially those storm lighters, the ones that produce a jet flame, but, you know, the little ones. Make sure if you do get a jet flame lighter that it is a positive click open. It can't be triggered while it's in your pocket. But seriously, I, I didn't go out and buy anything for my version of the Bear Grylls survival kit. It was just knocking around in my kit. I just assembled a few bits. It does all, if not more. Some coated wire that definitely isn't snare wire. The survival instructions a whistle of some description, some nylon cord, again of some description, some off-brand long burn matches, which I'm not sure if they work. Don't really want to test them. If you want matches like this, then just get the British Army ones, because they're just the best. Um, you've got a, a cotton wool ball and the knife, the partially serrated, partially useful knife. So that would normally retail you between 25 and 30 pounds. It comes in the little orange bag with another waterproof bag inside it. And it's garbage. Um, there's no other way to put this. So let's have a look at what you could have got. You know, just this, this is just my idea to cover all these bases. I mean, this does not by any means cover all your survival needs, but it will give you an edge. And I guess, you know, if you want that edge, you you can do better than this and you can certainly do better than for the money okay so i'm going to show you a few of the things i've got that i generally carry that would replace everything in this kit okay so i don't want to be massively negative about survival kits it's just that i've never ever seen a pre-assembled survival kit that was any good um, if there's a company out there that produces an actually good survival kit that would really give you an edge then please send it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something that you could have got for a lot cheaper and assembled yourself and put in any little bag that will fit in a pocket. There are little cargo pocket organizers that you could easily fit all of the stuff I'm going to show you and more into and just leave it there and forget it. You can ha it's so cheap you can have it as backup kit. So the first thing is that knife has got to go. That is one of the worst I mean, if that is the only knife you had, then fine. You know, the best knife in the world is the one you got on you when you need it. But really, for, a, for about the same money as you pay for that knife in retail, that's seven or eight pounds, you could get one of these. This is just an Opinel knife that I've modified slightly. Um, I'll open it up so you can see the modifications. Now what I've done is, if you can just see that, I've taken a divot out of it, because it's a wooden handle, I've just carved it away and sanded it down so that I can open it even if the wood swelled and it's got wet. It's a carbon steel blade, so it would give you a better spark, if you like. So that means that you can use it if you find a piece of flint or a piece of obsidian, anything like that. Anything sharp enough to basically shave off a red hot spark of metal. Um, and there's also an eyelet just at the end there. 
so that uh, you can hang it round your neck if you need to, so you can, with another waterproof bag inside it. And it's garbage. Um, there's no other way to put this. So let's have a look at what you could have got. You know, just this, this is just my idea to cover all these bases. I mean, this does not by any means cover all your survival needs, but it will give you an edge. And I guess, you know, if you want that edge, you, you can do better than this. And you can certainly do better than for the money. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few of the things I've got that I generally carry that would replace everything in this kit. Okay, so I don't want to be massively negative about survival kits. It's just that I've never, ever seen a pre-assembled survival kit that was any good. Um, if there's a company out there that produces an actually good survival kit that would really give you an edge, then please send it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something that you could have got for a lot cheaper and assembled yourself and put in any little bag that will fit in a pocket. There are little cargo pocket organizers that you could easily fit all of the stuff I'm going to show you and more into and just leave it there and forget it. You can ha it's so cheap you can have it as backup kit. So the first thing is that knife has got to go. That is one of the worst. I mean, if that is the only knife you had, then fine. You know, the best knife in the world is the one you got on you when you need it. But really, for, a, for about the same money as you pay for that knife in retail, about seven or eight pounds, you could get one of these. This is just an Opinel knife that I've modified slightly. Um, I'll open it up so you can see the modifications. Now what I've done is, if you can just see that, I've taken a divot out of it, because it's a wooden handle, I've just carved it away and sanded it down so that I can open it, even if the wood swelled and it's got wet. It's a carbon steel blade, so it would give you a better spark, if you like. So that means that you can use it if you find a piece of flint or a piece of obsidian, anything like that. Anything sharp enough to basically shave off a red hot spark of metal. Um, and there's also an eyelet just at the end there, so that uh, you can hang it round your neck if you need to. So you can make your own cordage or scavenge some cordage or anything like that and just get it round your neck and nice and secure. So these are between eight and 10 pounds. I've also got a little sheath, I'm a little neck sheath I made for it out of a piece of webbing. Just way easier, way better. I mean, everybody's gonna have their own idea on what's a good cheap knife, but I'm going for sort of compactness. I mean, you can even go for a smaller size of Opinel. They come in all sizes. This just happens to be the one that fits my hand comfortably and I didn't really feel like buying another one just to, you know, fit in this pouch. Although I'm going to show you something in a minute that, you know. We'll put that to one side because it doesn't seem it's better than nothing. There's a whistle. We're not going to try it because that's probably done God knows what to one end of it. We'll keep that on the assumption that it works. It's just really this costs 30 quid. This is retail for 30 quid, really. Yeah. Right, to be honest, there's a sh just buy some shoelaces. You can get one of them from Go Outdoors for seven quid, a Primus one that's miles better. Get a Buck Bantam for like 12 quid, or get an Enlin or Ganzo for three or four. Man, let's finish this. This is painful, this. Right, I know I need chemotherapy, but it makes me really ill. This is what this is like. Uh, I don't know what this is. Your fuse has gone in your house. You, you reach for your Bear Grylls survival kit. That can't be snare wire uh, because it's too stiff. It's just it's no, it's no good. Stiff wire for snares is ridiculous because it 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 won't sort of collapse down around the little say rabbit's ears or anything. It's just no, that's 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 going in there. So the cotton one and that's going in there. What on earth is this? I wonder. Oh, tooth floss, great. To be honest, again, string that some strings better than no string. Uh, matches probably work and this I'm not even gonna read this um, yeah I am I'm gonna look at the pictures that's that's a compromise between reading it and not reading it okay then oh, there's different ways of making fire right it, basically you can use a car battery to make fire where's the, the, there's no if you took the car battery out yeah, it was a bit heavy all right that's okay then uh, look there's there's a a ruler in case you want to measure penises. Let me see that. We're holding up to that one. 
and go for measuring. As, as bushcrafters in a dire situation begin their yeah. slow and inevitable move towards. I'll measure the dicks. And whose boss is that behind the curtain? <laughs> swear, showing you how to swear at a helicopter. Signal fire. I mean, it's basic. Yeah, it's better than nothing if you wanted to survive. But if you pushed a kid out of a lifeboat so you could get in the lifeboat and the Titanic was sinking, have you really survived? Because you're not living as a human anymore. Uh, that's for sure. I don't know. I mean, it right. I'll say this, it's I'm not as bad as I mean, it's, it's better than nothing, sick. you know. If if we're in the premise of what you were saying before, basically, you fell out of your canoe, your canoe's wandered off out, you're freezing cold, then, I don't know, use the orange bag to wave about until someone finds you, because do you really want to use it? It's got Bear Grylls logos on it, actually. The knife, it's not got a bear, the matches haven't got a Bear Grylls. With the whistle, um, and it had the shittest knife of all time. So, and just to prove, I'm going to put all that stuff in the little Bear Grylls pouch right now. So, so it's that eight meters of good cordage, 10 um, cotton wool balls, plus the container, which could come in handy for all sorts of other things. Definitely for keeping super dry tinder. You could pack other tinder into that or something else if you need, if you've got some small item that you need to keep dry or waterproof, you know, that's going to be good. That storm lighter, which was 50 pence, the um, LED head torch, there's no torch in the Bell Girls survival kit. The very, very good Oppenel knife, which I rate. It's a, it's a blinder of a knife. If I can get it in there. Sorry. And the whistle, like an actually good whistle. Like, you know, there's a reason referees use these so they can be heard over crowds, over background noise. It's going to go all in there. So if you're talking about compactness, so there you go. It's cheaper, it's as compact, and it's a hundred times better easily. This is why survival kits have a problem. Nobody putting together a survival, ticket, a survival kit for a price point, trying to match a price point, and trying to comply with all sorts of little local and international laws and stuff like that. Nobody's going to do a better job than you. And certainly nobody's going to you know, put, you, a person isn't going to put in something that they're never going to use. I mean, fair enough. The only thing I think I'd tag out of that survival kit, or the only things, maybe the dental floss. That's quite a good idea for small... I don't know what tiny things you're going to try and tie together, though. Generally speaking, if you're building a shelter, you're trying to tie big old logs together and stuff like that and make fixings. So, I don't know why you'd, you'd bother tying very small things together. It's a good idea though. I think it's it's handy. You know, you may come across a use for it. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. The fire steel is not bad, but again, it's a certain skill set. It requires a certain amount of paying attention. It's cool when you can light a fire with a fire steel, and great. You could probably light that one cotton wool ball with the fire steel. If you're in adverse weather or it's wet, I'd still prefer a lighter, and I'd prefer a lighter, that, a means of lighting fire that I know would react well with water. You know, and it's got its own sealed tinder and quite a bit of it. So if you're thinking, I absolutely need a fire lit now, you could put two or three of those cotton balls going until you've dried out your tinder. And we'll be talking about natural tinders and stuff like that will be going out. But literally, that's my survival kit. It's exactly the same size as the Bear Grylls one. And it's way better. It does everything and more. That knife will keep you alive. It's just brilliant. So, than these. And you can get larger head torches than these, but there's a reason. I mean, I own this one. This is my like backup, sits in my work bag head torch for emergencies. Just twist the cap and you get a nice bright, I think it's four LED light. You know, a little bit of extra light. Also, you can signal with it. So you can signal for help. I mean, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think you know what I'm talking about. It's easy, you know, they're, they're cheap, it's about a fiver's worth, it doesn't cost, you know, to have that as an option. I mean, obviously if it's in your survival kit, maybe put it in a little plastic bag, maybe put a piece of cardboard in between the battery and the contacts inside the torch, you know, to just make sure it doesn't twist on accidentally so when you need it you've got it. Or even this particular one takes a nice flat, um, it's a 2032 battery, or two of them, two little disc batteries, 
you could easily put like a piece of tape, electrical tape with two spare batteries and that gives you light for a very long time. So, you know, recommended. You know, seriously, light. If you are screwed, you do need it. Okay? Um, the cordage, just, you know, this is about a pound's worth. It's eight meters of three millimeter paracord. Not the best gauge stuff in the world. Probably won't take more than two or three hundred pounds. But this is going to be way better than that crappy white nylon cord. You know, it's much better, much tougher. You can use it for all sorts of stuff. There's even strands in the middle if you do need it for other cordage. You can strip it down to other, other tiny little strands so you can do a lot more with it. You can sew with some of the strands. And it's just better. I mean, and it also won't break down in UV light. And after a few months, if you've set anything up, if you are literally out there and screwed, that white nylon stuff, even if you left it out in sunlight, would just crumble to powder. It's, it's a kind of purlon cord. It's the same cord they use for guy ropes on really cheap tents. So that's that. Um, now the Bear Grylls one does come with some cotton balls as tinder. You know, it comes out, well, it comes with a cotton ball. One cotton ball. Seriously, are you kidding me? I get to light one fire. That's not gonna cut it. I need, you know, I might be cold, wet. I might not be paying too much attention. I need some backups and this is just a little, um, in fact it's a urine sample, but any little tube of a uh, plastic tube that's going to be more or less waterproof and you can be damn sure that a urine sample bottle is liquid leak proof. They are very much designed that way. This is one I just happened to get. It's got 10 Vaseline soaked cotton wool balls in it. That is 10 fires. If you know what you're doing lighting a fire, any kind of tinder, it just gives you way 